Lord, help us to share the gospel. Lord, help us to share the gospel. Lord, help us to share the gospel. Please remain standing for the gathering hymn, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty, number 503 in the red hymnal. seated. Father God, we invite you into this service today. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, we ask you to help us to love you the way you have loved us, to sacrifice for you the way you have sacrificed for us, to stop being afraid of sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we'll sing the Lord's Prayer. came into this world so that we could be forgiven for our sins. Let us confess them now freely. All together, Father, we confess our sins this morning, our sin of keeping the gospel to ourselves when there are so many people hurting and in need of it, of keeping our church a secret when there are so many people starving for what we've got. Help us to share our faith not by hitting folks in the head with our religion, but by engaging them in meaningful conversation. God knows our hearts and our spirits. God sees our struggles and forgives our weaknesses. Know that it is is in God's healing love that you live and move and have your being. Rejoice, for God is with you always.
giving honor to God who is the head of my life, to all of you who came out to hear a word from the Lord today. Lord, we ask you to bless this sermon, pour down your wisdom from heaven, remove everything that is in Daniel, and let your spirit shine through. Bless the ears that hear it, in Jesus' name, amen. The lectionary reading from today includes what is perhaps the most famous verse in the entire Bible. John 3.16, which states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Last week we talked about being an adventurer, that we are all adventurers from the moment of conception on. I didn't realize I'd be sick at the time and that I'd put Deacon Barb Walker in a somewhat sticky position. <laughs> having to repeat the word sperm repeatedly. But we're all adults here, and it is a fact that we are all the product of champion sperm who beat out astronomical odds to make us the adventurers we are. Although, as those of you who are not so distracted by the sex education portion of my sermon will recall, it focused on three things. One, that you are a great adventurer. Two, that Jesus was an adventurer. And three, that Jesus wants you to join his adventure and share it with others. So today I'm going to pick up where we left off and talk about making sharing the gospel your next adventure. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Now sharing the gospel with others may not sound easy. For it's been said that the quickest way to end a conversation in America is to mention Jesus. And we live in a society where most of us are very sensitive to rejection. That said, the good news that I'm hearing from the consultant provided by the Farmington Valley Association of Churches to which we belong is that we don't want to start with Jesus talk when we first meet folks. In fact, we don't necessarily want to bring Christ up at all, but just engage in getting to know folks until the subject of church or the Lord comes up naturally. Still, we must be more eager to engage others on a deeper level than we already are, and to ask ourselves if it is the right time to invite someone we already know for ch to church or to have a talk with them about our Lord and what Jesus has done for us. So there's a statistic that said that uh, only 2% of the people in the church will invite someone to church, but 83% of the people who come to church come because they were invited. Something to think about. So as I said, this may not be easy, but it can be. Not easy until we turn it into a path with heart. One of my favorite quotes comes from the teachings of Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda. Essentially, the book is about an anthropologist named Carlos Castaneda who interviews a native Mexican wise man known as Don Juan who teaches him about life. The quote, which I love so much, I put it at the beginning of my book to say that writing the book was a path with heart for me, reads as follows. For me, there is only the traveling on paths that have heart, on any path that may have heart. There I travel, and the only worthwhile challenge is to traverse its full length. And there I travel, looking, looking, breathlessly. While I'm not always as aggressive about telling folks about Jesus as I'd like, to me, speaking with folks, engaging them in meaningful conversation, and telling them about my church and Jesus is a path with heart. After all, I spend a great deal of time writing sermons and books that talk about Jesus and the value of going to church. For while I may be known as a writer who writes about humility a lot, I was careful to make the last part of my book on humility all about humility paths that please God, including, get this, an altar call for Christ, as my final humility path is the path of accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. You see, church, I may not be as committed as the Apostle Paul who wrote half of the books in the New Testament, but I am sold out for Jesus and happy about it. And you know what makes this easy for me? 
the same thing that made it easy for the Apostle Paul. I realize what a sinner I am. This is something that was magnified by my recent illness, an illness that caused my mind to float back to some of the not so great things I'd done in my life. Things that made me ask God why it was that he loved me so much and why he had revealed himself to me in so many wonderful and beautiful ways. You see, church, when you realize what a sinner you've been in your life, both before you met Jesus and even after you accepted him as Lord and Savior, when you really get deep down and think about how selfish you've been, you realize how grateful you are for what Jesus did for you. And that, my friends, is the secret to becoming an evangelist like myself or the Apostle Paul. For when you realize what Jesus did for you, and you know that he wants you to share the good news with others, you will do it and do it gladly. And you will do it gladly because you know that you live for him and not for yourself. Church, the other day I told you we all should look at life as an adventure, that we are all adventurers at heart. And the key to seeing life that way is to find your path with heart, that life project or purpose that makes you more alive than anything else. And as I said, for us Christians, sharing the adventure that is Christianity with our brothers and sisters on planet Earth is part of this path with heart that all of us in this church are on. So I challenge you, as you leave the church today, to go boldly forth and share the gospel, not by hitting folks over the head with your religion, but by getting to know folks and looking for the right opportunity to share your faith gently with your friends, relatives, and neighbors. May God bless you all. Right now, there might be one who does not know Christ or one who feels they have backslidden and want to reestablish their relationship with God. If that's you, I want you to know that Jesus is waiting, that God loves you. If you feel called to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just repeat after me, silently or aloud, Lord, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I turn my life over to you. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died on a cross for my sins and that you were raised again on the third day, conquering death and hell. If that was you and you're here in the service, I ask you to speak with me after service. And finally, if there's anyone who does not have a church home and wants to join this body of believers, if that's you, I ask you to speak with one of the deacons after church is over. Again, God bless you all. And at this time, we're going to serve communion.
thank you for another Sunday morning where you've allowed us to come out and worship you. We thank you, Lord, that we got up a little early today and we all made it out to church safe and sound. We ask you, Lord, to be with us this week. Keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Bless us as we adventure out into the world and help us, Lord, to have meaningful conversations with our friends and family and neighbors and to know when it is the right time to mention you and our church. In Jesus' name, amen. The Saybrook Fish House in Canton has been serving fresh seafood, chicken, and prime steaks for 40 years. Experience one of our three unique dining room settings, two with fireplaces, or relax in our cozy pub with a craft beer, wine by the glass, or specialty cocktail while enjoying a meal from our new Lighter Fair pub menu. Serving lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday, reservations accepted for parties of 2 to 42, gift cards always available. The Saybrook Fish House, nestled at the crossroads of routes 44, 202, and 179 in Canton. Kirk Barwis. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time, 